guys. Today I'd like to talk real quick about blood types. And um, blood types are probably one of those things you've heard about your entire life, but it's not probably 100% clear. That's because it's kind of complicated. So it turns out that there are four major types of blood in people on Earth. Okay, and these types are based on the specific protein markers that identify each type of blood. So every cell in our body is coated with special proteins that tell the immune system of our body that those cells belong to us. Okay, and if the immune system finds these markers, you know, we have these leukocytes, these white blood cells that are cruising around our body. If they find these specific protein markers on a cell that identifies it as us, the immune system goes, okay, you belong. But if it doesn't find those cells, then the immune system is activated. Or if it finds some markers that don't belong to our body, then the immune cell thinks that it's, you know, a bacteria or a virus and it wants to take care of it. Okay. Well, it turns out, let's take someone with AB blood as an example. Okay. So someone with AB blood, their blood cell is going to look like this. They're going to have two types of proteins in the cell membrane of this blood cell that identifies that cell as part of that person's body. Okay, It's going to have protein markers that I'll draw in blue. These are called A markers. And it's going to have protein markers that are drawn in red. Those are called B markers. If the immune cell from this person finds a cell with an A marker, he's going to be okay with it because that belongs. In addition, if he finds a cell with a B marker, he's going to be okay with it. That has some important implications because someone with A blood, their red blood cell is only going to have these A markers, not the B markers. However, if someone with this A blood donates their blood to this person with AB blood, the immune system of this person is going to be completely okay with it because it's used to seeing these A markers. So someone with AB blood can receive from someone with A blood. In addition, someone with B blood is going to have these red B markers in the surface of their red blood cells. Okay, not A, but just B. If this person gives his blood to someone with AB, that's okay too because the immune cell is immune systems used to seeing these B markers and he's all right with it. Finally, someone with O blood, they're unique because their blood cells contain zero markers. And so someone with O blood can donate to this a person with AB. The immune cell is okay with it because there's no markers, there's nothing to get upset about. So someone with AB blood can receive blood from everyone. It's the universal recipient. That's a little bit different in the case of this person with A blood. Now, this person with A blood, he has A markers on his red blood cells. But he also has a certain immune sensitivity to other blood types. So he's going to have these antibodies in his blood, in his or her blood. Antibodies are little pieces of protein that, are, that will react with certain types of cells. These antibodies that are going to be located in uh, this person's uh, blood are going to be sensitive to B. They're going to be anti-B antibodies. And these antibodies are going to spontaneously develop after a first couple months of age. So once you're about two months of age, these antibodies start to develop. And what these antibodies do is if they come into contact with any cell that contains the B marker, they're going to react to it. They're going to bind those cells. They're going to make them clump together into these big clumps. And that's going to be a really bad situation for that person because all these big clumps are going to act like a bunch of blood clots. So if some, this person with A blood receives blood from the AB, so if these AB blood cells are put into the, per, the bloodstream of someone with A, these anti-B antibodies are going to react to these markers, cause them to clump together, and that's going to be a really bad situation. Okay. Same deal with this. If someone with B blood donates to someone with A blood, these anti-B antibodies are going to react to the B markers and that's going to cause them to clump together and it's going to um, cause a, um, a blood a reaction, you know, an anti, a blood mismatch reaction, which is uh, potentially fatal and very serious. So someone with A blood can obviously receive blood from another person with A, right, because they have the A markers, or from someone with O because they lack markers altogether and that won't activate the immune system. So someone with A blood can receive from A or O. 
Now someone with B blood, they contain these B markers, but they contain also contain antibodies that are gonna be sensitive to A. These are gonna be anti-A blood antibodies. If this person with B blood receives blood from someone with A, these anti-A antibodies are gonna to react to these A markers, causing a blood mismatch reaction, very bad. Same deal with AB. These A markers on the AB blood are gonna to react to the anti-A antibodies, causing this, um, this very bad reaction. So someone with B blood can receive blood from someone who also has B or with O, and that's because these O blood um, cells lack any type of markers and the immune system does not react. Someone with O blood, they lack these markers, but they contain both types of antibodies. So the immune cell, immune system, will react to both A blood and to B blood. That means that if someone with O blood receives any of these types of blood cells, it's going to activate the immune system, causing those blood cells to clump together in the process called agglutination, and that's going to be very bad. So someone with O blood can only receive blood from another person with O. The last thing we need to talk about is an Rh factor. Think of an Rh factor as like a fifth marker that exists on blood cells. Okay, About 85% of the population is Rh positive. That means they have this fifth marker. Only 15% is negative, they lack it. Now, all of these antibodies that form against A and B, they're gonna form spontaneously in people, or very early on in life. But the antibodies that react against this fifth um, blood type, this Rh factor, this fifth marker, the Rh factor, they don't form spontaneously. So as an example, take someone who's Rh negative, they lack this fifth marker. They don't contain antibodies that will react against Rh positive blood. But if they're exposed to Rh positive blood, that primes the immune system so that antibodies against the Rh positive blood are then formed. So that the second time that they come into contact with Rh positive blood, that causes a blood mismatch reaction, which is just as dangerous as any other mismatch reaction. Okay? So if someone's A positive, that means they contain that Rh factor. If they're B negative, they lack it. People that are negative, B negative, should only receive blood that from other negative people so that, those, um, that immune system doesn't become primed. Okay? It's not such a problem on the other way around.